Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Chad Henderson here. It's September 13th, harvesting. We're going to give it a shot. Let's see. This is a uh, agri-gold corn, and it's it's really good corn. I've got some corn that blew down really bad when it was V8, V9. And so that kept me from kicking back in. And, you know, it recovered really nice. So it done a good job on that. There's one that broke with me. I guess the lesson I learned with this is don't give up on it. But you can look down through there, there may be one or two out of the whole thing that had much tip back. But I guess this would be normal production irrigated corn for us right here. So this is the corn we got for Kevin Cab right here. <laughs> this is gonna be the one that sets me free right here. How about this? I just take this first one first. How about that? We get the first one first. Everybody likes to get the first one first, you know? Yeah. And last but not least, if you want your corn knee high by July, better get the plant, boys. I make my living off the land. We're definitely gonna get rowdy this year. With aching back in Cali's pain. I'd like to say that this season's gonna be better. Old man said you read what you saw. If you're gonna do something, be the best you can be at it. It's hard out here. I'm always bringing the heat. We in Alabama. I'm an early riser, no nighter. Call me Plowboy, yeah. I'm a fighter. Ain't gonna stop till they put me in my grave. We're coming back a little harder this year. I'm a I was actually 13. I would come out here during the summer, and I've been coming ever since. I'd come work all the way through week and get the last couple weeks off for some vacation, heading back to school, and then repeat that every year until I graduated. And I figured I could learn more coming here right out of school than I could going to college. So I graduated on a Friday and come here on a Monday and started full-time work with my dad and my grandfather. Maybe I can continue this fifth generation on and not let it die. I think everything went well, you know. We had a good a good crop going, and we still got a really good crop. I mean, this is probably one of the best dry land crops that I've produced in a long time. We've really been blessed this year with the amount of rain. Just got a truck coming here. We hope it's got a bunch of corn on it. Uh, make my cousin Chad very happy. So we log everything through our software. It's the way we keep up with all of our records per farm. See what we got. We have a lot of grain coming in out of here, so we want to be hyper accurate as to what we've got coming in out of the field where we can determine yields. With each load, I print a ticket. We micromanage all of our data, so look out, Corn Warriors. Here comes the first one. We're going to look behind this combine for just a second and see what we're looking like. Uh, we run a set of XPR2s in this machine, and so let's just see what the XPR2s do. There's one, two, all in all, it looks pretty good. Let's check over here at the edge and see if it's throwing anything out the chopper. There's one here. So that's one kernel. I think they say four to five to a square, two or three to a square. So how about two to five feet? Yet to be seen whether we'll be back next year, but if we don't, we've had a heck of a time. I, mean, I would recommend it to anybody to join this Corn Warriors team and uh, you know play the game with everybody across the country and, but we want to thank the sponsors. We had BASF, we had XBR2 Concaves, 
um, Agrigold, uh, Concept Agritech. Definitely gotta give kudos to the Corn Warrior crew. They have hung cameras, pulled stunts, back flipped, but it has been a really good time. The people behind me, I can't think enough. All the guys that work for me, my son, my father, Stuart, sure makes it easier when you got a team behind you that supports you. So we pulled, we've got one pull today. I think Brooks made a pull today. I'm sure Corey ain't made no pulls. He's still riding around the truck trying to figure out which pull to make. Jake, his corn's still green, I'm sure. Kevin, I'm sure his is still green too, you know. Dan, I mean, let's just pray for old Dan up there. Man, they had a drought up that way and it was, it's rough on them boys, so. Let's hope he puts a good number up, but we made one today, guys. It wasn't the number we was looking for, but it was a number. And we definitely leave it open. As long as there's corn in the field, there's a chance for another number, so be ready. I just want to speak for just a minute about my buddy here. Jesse here, he's one year younger than me, good friend of mine, NCGA, state winner. Jesse passed away. Jesse's 46 years old, had a heart attack. Farmed with his father, Dickie Hobbs, and had four children. And um, it really took a toll on us in community. This harvest is for him. These numbers are for him. And so, as long as there's corn in the field, we're gonna try to stick the best number up that we possibly can for old Jesse. Estes Concaves has made a big difference for us. I would safely say we've increased our capacity by a thousand bushel per hour. Guaranteed to get it done right there. I will win. Give Estes a try. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen. Pivot Bio. Hey, it's Dan Lipkus, Corn Warriors. Uh, we're picking some of our irrigated corn. We, uh, we've got some pretty good corn on the irrigated acres. Dryland acres have a lot to be desired this year with uh, about four inches of rain for the summer in uh, Agrigold 64.99 that always always comes through for me a little trouble here now nah, I'm losing power what the hell I'm losing power in a combine I'm afraid it's fuel filter I'm gonna come over there Gotta see what we gotta get. I'm gonna have to put a fuel filter in it. Yeah, it's gonna be a while. We're gonna be down. Oh, we've been struggling. I mean, down corn has been, that just, you know, this contest stuff should have been done, but when you got a bunch of down corn, you gotta stay on it. Because yeah. it's just getting worse and worse. Uh, and enough frickin' I've actually struggled with his head a fair amount, but I think we might have oh. I think we might have finally got it figured out. This is good, this is good consistent corn. I think it's probably gonna be around 320, I think. Yeah. No. Still ain't got enough. Still got issues. Same problem. We gotta look that turbo over better and, uh, you know, check the cooling. You know, check the radiator and stuff. We gotta look those hose clamps over better. I did. Tim, you know, come back over, shut it down. We're gonna be down.
right now, you know, what we're talking about with the SD's concaves now results in actual field uh, demonstration or, or what it's really doing in the field is what it's all about. So what I want to show you is, you know, this is this our aggregate old 6499. This is this is this ear and this is her cob. You know, as you can see right there, we are taking it for the most part, most cobs are coming out like this. I'm taking all all the kernels off, leaving the cob intact. We're not breaking them up. When you're breaking them up, you know, it ends up down the sieves and you know, you gotta shut your sieves up. So I'm able to run my sieves more open because the cobs are coming out whole for the most part. And we're doing a really clean job uh, thrashing. Coming out with a clean sample, a good sample. Uh, we don't get any dock and we can harvest faster. SD cod caves definitely pay their way. dead already but but he ain't been dead very long somebody gutted him and then drug him in my cornfield okay back at it with the soil warrior today this year we're focusing on soil health a little more you'll hear me say it over and over again it's the best thing I've ever planted on uh, we've been using BASF we've really fell in love with the Veltima we recommend BASF it lasts longer and works harder to make sure that they are covered from head to toe We're in Jamestown, Ohio. It's Saturday, November 6th. We are shelling some corn. We are at a farm we call the Radar Farm. It's doing exceptionally well. Uh, we're really, really happy with it. So on the corn that we're running here, it's actually, we have a side-by-side -side trial. So it's the same hybrid number, but one was treated uh, with Groundworks BioAg. Rutella X, which is the seed treatment, that is a mycorrhiza product. So when, what we're trying to do with the mycorrhiza is to get that plant off to a better start. We need a bigger root mass, more food, more mycorrhiza for that plant. So we're really careful with the products that we use and the Groundworks BioAg Rutella X is one of those products. Another product that's really helped with that this year is with the disease is with the Veltima. Well, you know, our corn's still standing like soldiers out here. It's November 6th. 17% moisture corn, 300 plus bushel, and it's just healthy as can be. We had some late season rain come in. I was really concerned with the amount of nitrogen we was gonna have left because I could not bring, bring, bring in another plane. He was just too busy. So we're really gonna rely with the Pivot Bio. Let's see what the Pivot Bio can do. And man, I tell you what, I've been tickled to death with that product this year. It's done absolutely everything it said. The test we did, with, with the new Proven 40. If you like the first, the OG Proven, then you're gonna love the Proven 40. One of the bigger reasons this harvest has gone so much smoother is, you know, we got two Fent T9s over there. They've just been pumping the grain. They've done a great job running this year, keeping the grain clean. I, I just wanna thank Adco and Fent. So far, I've, I've been, been very pleased with everything. I've been getting a lot of phone calls this year from a lot of happy customers. The Advanced Yield Select Crop in Input lineup, uh, we've seen great results, really, really good results. You know, I, I'm not a salesman. I want you to see it for yourself. You know, go to www.advancedyield.com and our whole lineup's there. Do not wait around this year. Go ahead and get your order in and we'll get a process for you. All right, we're here in Jamestown, Ohio for the third grade Super Bowl. Hi, my name is Chris Perez, and I'm the head coach of the third grade Rams. Threw an extra couple things in here towards the end of the season to try to get ready to beat these guys. We haven't beat them in two years. We're ready to get revenge on them.
Today is November the 7th. We're at my son's farm called Radar Farm. We're harvesting corn. There's 1,400 acres left, and we're getting to the end finally. It's been the best yields we've ever had since I've been farming. Very blessed. I think we started with 33 or 3,400 of corn. We're down to 1,400, so hopefully by the end of next week it'll all be over with. But when you get down to the end, you try to cram every kernel in the bin that you can. I might take a day or two off, just a, a weekend off or something, but I, I'm gonna put it to you this way. How lucky am I to get to do what I wanna do every day of the year? Well, of course, more uh, into computers and technology like that. You know, I'm 64, and I've had to hunt and peck for everything that I want to look for in a computer. And Corey just lays his hands up there and don't even look at it and he does it all. Farmers, what he wanted to do? I tell him, take the bull by the horns, and boy, he did. He did. He really has done a, he's learned a lot, and he does well, and very proud of him. I tell you, farming anymore takes so much money, and it's just hard for a, a new guy to ever get into farming. I was lucky to have a, a father that was farming. We learn stuff every year, because we put out so many tests to try to, to get ourselves better at it. And that, that's, that's important. You got to change with the times. Uh, it's always better and newer technology, and um, you can't just put your head in the sand yeah. and uh, not pay attention to the changes because it'll pass you by. Uh, we've been using BASF. We've really fell in love with the Veltima. We recommend BASF. It lasts longer and works harder to make sure that they are covered from head to toe. We're doing a lot of different trials, and one of them is Concept Agritech. We're doing a in-furrow starter trial. The thing I'm the most excited to try is a bunch of bugs. It's a biological. We're excited to see how they work out. I got up this morning and I said, Corn Warriors is not going to make me cuss today. Y'all ready? What are we doing now? Going back to the field. Fix it. Yep, I guess you'll come back and fix it. All right, so you harvested the towel beans. What'd you think? So you know this was our this is our maiden voyage. So he said the best thing to do is just leave this hipped up and let it settle on its own. Well there's one problem with that. I'm gonna plant some beans on it. They come down in June when we harvest their wheat. So we got it planted and I was like, you know, if we get anything out of this, it'll be good because a lot of times I wouldn't plant it on much at all. What were you expecting versus what you think you saw? Well, I mean, I was expecting to be 20 bushel less. Do you know when I come in talking to you and Mike when I said, I need about three lines. I need about 500 foot of tile. 150,000 foot later, <laughs> here we are. Right. You know, we had seven acres over there that we hadn't planted a crop on. Now we have about one acre. The amount of water that we had this year, that's where a lot of the yield come from. And then us being able to keep that water off with this lift station, it really helped. Speaking of that, tell them about what we got new on the lift station. We decided to add some remote monitoring capabilities to this. Instead of having to come out here at night and look and see what's going on with it, if it's cutting on and cutting off, it'll tell you whether or not it's gonna be doing that. We're, we've also added flow monitor um, sensors on it, as well as soil moisture sensors. We're looking to also add a nitrogen probe to see how much nitrogen is available in the soil. The beauty of this whole deal when we started this, we want to be able to own this farm, be able to control the water. And now we have with this lift station, we get to take everything we want to off of it. And we can monitor that through this. You know, farmers are being more efficient. If we can get this nitrogen tool to work, that'll help us a ton. And you know, the farmers always backs against the wall, you know, on what we're putting in the streams, what we're getting on runoff. We're trying to be 
more efficient than anybody else. Drainage water management is absolutely a sustainability practice. There are 10 practices that farmers up in Ohio are putting into, into play in order to keep algae bloom from occurring. Drainage water management is probably number six or number seven on that list because it is a functional way in order to pull that water off. The good thing is, I got this first one out of the way. Now we're looking forward to what's coming next year. Y'all come on down here and pin this thing out here because this is where we're gonna land the next corn record right here. I'm not saying a national record, I'm saying a record for Chad. The tile, I think, is gonna substantially help that. Goals for next year, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be some pretty lofty goals just because of what we had this year. You know, my goal is to always beat my personal best. I don't feel like I'm in competition with anybody else. Uh, you know, with, with, with Kevin and Dan and even Chad and Jake, you know, those, those guys are hard to beat. If I can compete with them, great. But uh, my goal is to always break my own personal record. What can I do to improve myself my farm operation. Mother Nature, you know, treated us very kindly this year, so I can't count on and guarantee that's gonna be the same. I'm not saying we can't repeat our yield that we had this year, but we could have a tougher time doing that compared to this year. We're always after that crown, but you know, Kevin's got that crown on pretty tightly, so that's gonna be a hard one to pull away. And you know, that's a guy that I've always looked up to. And you know, we're on the same show together. I just sit back and just watch him, and it's just, I just shake my head, because the things that he, he can do is just, is, is just amazing. Hey, everybody. It's October 20th. We're uh, out here picking some commercial corn. I actually uh, talked a little bit this spring in this same exact field how everything got started early because we were warm and we were dry and planters were flying through. We had everything planted super early this year. We are picking 112 day corn. This is about 17%. We've had a very stressful summer, a stressful season actually. It started out strong, then it stopped raining. And then we couldn't catch a rain. Instead of rainstorms, we had windstorms. So it's been a very stressful season for this corn to be growing in. Uh, combines have actually been rolling since the first week of September in this area, which is unheard of for us in Northern Illinois. We're gonna have plenty to market during, during the next year. We're gonna have a lot of corn that's yet to sell. So. I'm hoping this world uh, straightens her out a little bit. We all know through the COVID environment and uh, change of administrations that some things look kind of bleak. But uh, as a farmer, you always hope for hope for more, hope for better. Uh, next year is going to be tough with input prices. A lot of stuff's doubled, and that's going to put a real crimper on profits. So prices better maintain. Our guys are going to be in, having a lot of trouble this next season. So. We'll keep plugging away and we'll do the best we can.